First of all, thank you for the invitation. Thank you, uh, thank you, Calgary Arts Development. Thank you, Arts Commons. Thank you, One Yellow Rabbit. Uh, I cannot not mention that uh, it's very um, it's very special to be in Michael's Green Theater. Um, the last time I saw Michael was uh, at Banff uh, when I was just I I was not yet considering the possibility of being the CEO of the Canada Council. I was at that time uh, at the theater school and I was the vice chair of the Canada Council and Michael took me out of a meeting of the art summit to observe for uh, two hours uh, the rehearsal of uh, making a treaty, uh, treaty seven uh, and uh, it's the last time I saw him so I uh, think about him when I'm here. Um, I want to, uh, I, th what I'm proposing is that I will try to kind of a give you a kind of a the big picture of the transformation uh, that uh, we are working on right now at the Canada Council for maybe 20 minutes and then uh, I will leave most of the time for question and answers because it's very difficult for me to know exactly who knows what and, and all of that and I think that uh, uh, the question and answer period is probably uh, for for all of us the most uh, simple way to make sure that we do engage in a conversation that is uh, more useful than a lecture. So, um, so I want to I will kind of uh, tell you where where we are uh, in a very simple way, and maybe the best way for you to is, is to explain. First of all, first of all, why I accepted to play that role of the CEO of the Canada Council, why I accepted to move from Montreal to Ottawa, which is a big, um, it's a daunting uh, cultural decision, um, and, um, and 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 what is the plan now? So uh, I've been uh, I've been privileged to to work for. Uh, 35 years of my life uh, anchored in the National Theatre School, so constantly surrounded by people who are always 20, uh, who are, you know, uh, learning to uh, to do theatre, but because it's the, it's a theatre school, it's uh, it means that it's a constant circulation of not only theatre people, but also visual artists who are teaching in design, musicians, uh, choreographers, dancers. Uh, uh, interestingly enough, in, in a uh, in video artists more and more uh, uh, during the recent years, uh, uh, media artists, in fact, uh, musicians, obviously. Uh, I, I had the, the chance to, to be an, an francophone and anglophone and coming from all over can Canada and coming from all over the world. So I have been immersed uh, all my professional life since the age of 25 in that world and, and being kind of uh, informed and, and involved in many, many discussions. And I always saw the National Tier School as kind of the laboratory where you know, I could learn and try ideas and debate and do many different things uh, and did, in fact, all the possible jobs in that institution, including becoming eventually the CEO of the institution. But since uh, 20 years, uh, one of my, uh, maybe what I did uh, the most was also to be very involved uh, in, as a volunteer to many different aspects of the cultural development, uh, mainly at the city level. I've been uh, involved in the creation uh, of an organization called Culture Montreal, which is really kind of a uh, kind of a new way to advocate for arts and culture in a city, uh, organizing a huge gathering of artists and non-artists with the goal of making sure that any important decision impacting the future of the city could not not take into account arts and culture. Uh, that led me to kind of uh, be eventually involved uh, with uh, the Canada Council as a vice chair for 10 years where I had the chance to understand how it works and what are the challenges of the Canada Council uh, on top of being constantly in Montreal under siege 
by artists happy or most of the time not happy with decisions from the Canada Council because, you know, I was a pub public figure and anyone would come to me to say, you know, I n don't agree with that, I don't, anyway. Um, and um, so being very aware of, of, of what that organization is facing in terms of challenges, and uh, I've been personally involved uh, in very important moments at the Canada Council where there was no chair and I was the vice chair, notably in the big discussion before the Liberals uh, uh, left uh, the, the power in Ottawa, uh, lost the election, uh, I, w I re remind vividly and I have a very nice frame somewhere hidden since many years with uh, Karen Kane, myself, and Lisa Frula, uh, because we were doing in Montreal, in the Monument National, at nine o'clock in the morning, on a Thursday morning, the announcement of the doubling of the budget of the Canada Council. And at that time, it was going from uh, 150 million to $3 million, $300 million. And, uh, and I've been uh, involved after that with you know, the arrival of the conservative government and then the push to get uh, uh, a raise that finally became uh, 50 millions over two years and 30 millions ongoing. So I've been very involved in all the political dealings around the Canada Council during different moments of the organization. So when, uh, when uh, there was an opening uh, for the position of um, and I published also, as some of you may know, an essay on culture called uh, In English, No Culture, No Future. And that was a book I wrote uh, at the end of my first mandate as the Vice Chair of the Canada Council uh, about, uh, in fact, the, the, the what prompted the, the writing of that book uh, were the cuts made by the first uh, minority government, uh, conservative government, on international, uh, the inter international outreach of artists. And when I wrote that book, I was told very clearly by very influent people in the government that never ever in the world that I would be reappointed as the vice chair of the Canada Council. <laughs> and it was okay because I thought I did my time. But eventually, uh, when James Moore has been appointed as the new kind of a minister of Canadian heritage, he phoned me in Montreal and insisting a lot that I would accept another mandate. Uh, there was a, a, a real intention, uh, a sense of reconciliation with the Quebec community. And obviously, my colleagues and the people at the... <laughs> that's that's the federal government. No, uh, so uh, so there was a, a a sense that it was useful to do a second mandate, and and I and I did that mandate. But so once the job was opened, I kind of uh, the chair of the Canada Council who passed uh, uh, who died uh, in January, Joe Rotman, a very interesting man, someone I've met finally because of the Canada Council, a businessman from Toronto, uh, very supportive of, uh, of the vision of the Conservative government, but at the same time someone with a very large vision about the importance of the arts and society and in, in his own life, and someone absolutely committed to the Canada Council, someone who when I've met him insisted that, insisted that I would take the second mandate, and I remember vividly going to Toronto in a restaurant, an Italian restaurant, and he said, you know, Simon, if you accept to serve on the Canada Council, I swear the government will not cut one cent from the Canada Council. I'm not inviting you to the board to see the downsizing of the organization. And this is how we kind of uh, met each other, and this is how we worked. So when the job was opened, he asked me if I would uh, accept to put my name for an appointment, uh, and it's a government appointment. It's not, you don't become a bureaucrat, you're appointed, it's a political appointment. Um, and I said that, obviously I was not the usual suspect for such an appointment, but it happened. And um, it happened and it meant to me that uh, no one uh, inside the council, outside the council, in the community, or at the government level, could ever pretend that I came there with a hidden agenda. Because all the, during the, the interview process, and it's a long process, very 
13 people around the table, you know, PCO, PM, everybody's there. And uh, during all the interviews, I always said, if I go to and I accept that position, it's because I will champion the Canada Council as an organization, and I will fight for the Canada Council to be able to deliver more public values, more support to the arts, and reposition the organization as an organization that will have impact for at least 10 years. And that's the only reason why I would accept that job. So once I've been appointed, I felt that there was a good alignment in order to try to uh, reinvent and, and, and really respond finally to a lot of uh, consultations that the Canada, Canada Council had been conducted over and over and over and over over the last few years, where many, many conclusions always kind of uh, are surfacing about Yes, the need for more money, the need for more flexibility, the need for more agility, the, meet, the, the need for uh, more impact, the need for uh, supporting the artists more and more in their own terms, the need to, to be able to not constantly force the artist and the ar artist organization to fit the, uh, the multiple boxes of the Canada Council, and so on. The need to address big issues like change uh, created by technology, uh, diversity, Aboriginal question. I mean, all these different questions, you know, keep surfacing for years. And we tried to, we tried, and the Canada Council tried very hard to answer all those different questions and concerns, but mostly by creating and, and adjusting programs. With the net result that today, we have 148 programs at the Canada Council, and to be honest, to tackle the issues that are raised by the artistic community, we would need to create another 100 new programs just to fix it. So, running an organization with 250 programs eventually is impossible to do. We, we kind of lost something over the last 20 years, and what we lost is the result of what I consider to be uh, not uh, the, the not cre it's not created by the fact that we pay a lot of attention to artistic discipline, but it's created by what, what I would call the silo effect of being structured discipline by discipline. Each discipline at the Canada Council a has its full suite of programs, and some programs are very granular, some are very big, some programs are kind of a, uh, driven by uh, outcomes or expected outcomes, some programs are driven by serving a very specific community or even, you know, mm, mid-career artists in visual arts or, you know, a, a lot of so, so when, you, when you look at all that, you realize that it's very, very difficult for the Canada Council to make the case uh, for its, uh, its future, even make the case for money. Uh, and when I came to the Council, what I did, um, I organized the first day I came a meeting with the, all the staff. So it's roughly 240 people uh, working for the Canada Council permanent uh, jobs, and uh, everybody was in the same room in the new building. It's kind of a, the cafeteria, but you, we can open the, 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 the walls and have everybody in the same room. And I said, uh, okay, so here I am. Uh, I, I knew a lot of people because I've been s for so long on the board, and I said, I coming here uh, without any intention to have a long career in, uh, in Ottawa, it's too late anyway, <laughs> I'm a grandfather. I'm coming here with absolutely no intention to cut jobs or to downsize the organization. I'm coming in with the intention of not touching the structure of the Canada Council for a full year because I think we need to figure out what we want to do and then we'll adapt the structure to deliver what, what we should do. Uh, and I'm coming here to make sure that after my mandate, which is the longest mandate ever given to a CEO, five years, never happened before, it was always two, three, four years, but never five. Uh, and, and most of the time with people who took at least a year to figure out what to do. And, but so, so, uh, so I said what I want to do is I, I, I really want to devote all the energy I have, everything I have with the support of the board and with your support and with the support of the community. 
and try to do with the Canada Council what most of the Arts Council, National Arts Council in the world did not succeed to do over the last 10 years. Because if you look at the situation worldwide, what you see, especially since 2008, which is seven years ago roughly, so since the beginning of the, the international recession created by <laughs> the derail of uh, the American financial system, what you see is that all over the world, government cuts se cut sever severely uh, arts council. You know, 36% in England. Uh, you know, n let's not talk about the public funding in Spain, in Greece. Uh, NEA, who has been kind of uh, augmented and na now is seriously downsized. Everywhere in the world, uh, very, very, very rare exception, severe budgetary cuts and also political decisions forcing uh, the Arts Council and most of the country to abandon peer assessment, too expensive, to, uh, to merge with uh, the, the structure to support the industries, like in Scotland, like in, in, in Ireland, in, in many countries, put the focus on exporting, um, so downsizing, reducing, I mean, all the Arts Council uh, and I had the chance to meet uh, 17 of my vis-a-vis -vis over the last uh, few months in two different cities <laughs> where I was not to attend the conference but to meet them because they were attending the conference and have all those conversations about what happened. And those arts council have been forced uh, because of external decisions, external to them and external obviously to the arts sector. And the Canada Council is, as of today, the Arts Council, which is the closest in terms of s its operation, its organization, its values, to the original model. It's the one who is still quite intact. And that is intact because over the last, uh, since 2008, for geopolitical reasons that we all know and that have been lucky to be associated with, uh, the Canada Council has not been cut and is not right now threatened to be cut. So because of we are in that very unique position of strength, it's time for us to try to reinvent and, and consolidate the model to make it more robust for the next decade, for especially for the next generation, for the generation after mine, to make it you know, a, a solid, uh, reinvented and re regurated uh, way to support the arts. And we, we have a very, very, sh we had a very short period, window of opportunity because obviously uh, there's a federal election coming uh, in October, uh, meaning that the Canada Council will need to be silent, uh, you know, two months before that election without knowing exactly what we will be the outcome of that election. And we are at the at the end of a government, at the end of our own strategic plan, we are contemplating the 60th anniversary of the council in 2017. We have, we, when I came, I had that pile of research and consultations with the artistic milieu. And then, and, and a supportive board, supportive chair, and, and all that was in place to try to make that move before again being told to make that move by, or any move, uh, probably a different move by a government. So Canada Council has been also kind of um, pressured in a way over the last few years by, uh, uh, you know, uh, anyone who was observing the creeping of all its programs and the lack of, lack of logic and the lack of coherence between all these different programs. So. I said that uh, I said to the staff that we would work and try to make sure that we would use the time we have and the window of, of opportunity we have to really try to 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 have a, a Canada Council uh, more able to to go to the government and to partner also with other arts funders, private or public, in order to scale up the impact of the organization. And, and that I needed gr ga uh, gains of productivity from the staff, but not the type of gains of productivity that are the traditional ones in Ottawa right now, which is you cut the jobs and you, you ask the remaining people to do the same job, but more trying to do much more with what we have 
and, 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 and get rid of all the operations and all the work that we do that has no value added, that is purely bureaucratic, to make sure that more and more the people working at the Canada Council are really working to serve the artistic community and to deliver more art to Canadians in, in, in a more efficient way. So that was kind of the, the deal. And um, what, we, uh, what we realized, uh, you know, debating and discussing with the Arts Division, the day number two of my job, and I won't tell you each day because it will be long, but the day number two of my job was a, a very interesting discussion. And it was my first meeting with what we call now the division, the uh, artistic discipline division, which is a strange structure inside the Canada Council because if, if, not, if not everyone is working for the arts division, I wonder why. Anyway, so, so we have an, an, an artistic discipline division. So I've met though the, 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 all the people, you know some of them, who are the heads of discipline. I said, what would we do f we, if we would have 25, 50, or 100 million more? What would we do? And it started a very strange conversation because the first question was, how will we divide the pie? Because, you know, we have a division of the pie at the Canada Council, you know, 28 millions for music and so much for theater, less, and, and less for, for, for media arts. And, all. and that division of the pie has nothing rational. When you ask the question, no one can justify that it's divided this way, but, you know, almost 60 years of layers of decisions and, and all of that. And here we are with, with a, a, a pie divided in terms of where we put the money that is not uh, ideal or fair reflection of the level of the artistic uh, creation in this country. And that is in fact clearly a legacy from the, the last century inspired by a lot of uh, thinking of the 19th century. This is what we have now. So the discussion about where we would put the money was very, very difficult. Then the discussion about to do what was even more difficult because when you think about it, the way we are organized right now, you take, let's say, 20 millions and you say, okay, so much goes to theater and, and you respect more or less the pro rata of the pie. What will you produce? You know, you will produce more, a little bit more support, but then it's difficult to argue, you know, that it's a, it's a real game changer in terms of, of investment. If you double, you can start to have a more serious discussion, but if you double, and when we were contemplating the doubling of the Canada Council, it was kind of a crisis because we did not know exactly how we would handle all that. And the reason why is that the programs of the Canada Council and the way we are organized are not clear in terms of the goals we want to achieve and the expected outcomes. They have their internal logic that is contributing to the ecology of sub-sub systems. But in terms of the big picture, it's very difficult to argue precisely why you need more money, except that we artists need more money and everybody needs more money. But in, so we started to, we, I stopped the conversation and eventually we, we, we said that we kind of needed to change the thinking of the Canada Council and we needed to address seriously this question of constant creeping of programs and this way of answering to any new trends and any new uh, need by a program that takes two years to design and that's one design becomes obsolete or some, you know, within the two years, especially the new programs. So, so we kind of started to have a discussion about how can we cover the entire ground of what the Canada Council does today in a way that is much more logic that is much more robust, that is much more simple to access, to explain, to defend, to fund, to. How can we make sure that the Canada Council could regain its capacity to be strategic? Because years ago, especially in the 70s, the Canada Council had that edge of saying, okay, we want to support Canadian content and we made it all the way. But today with the, the, the complexity of each discipline, any commitment made by the Canada Council is a nightmare to deliver. 
And I will give you an example. The, f the, the only big commitment in terms of money made by the Canada Council since five years was the doubling of our investments for international. We, we said publicly uh, that we would go from $5 million to $10 million to uh, support Canadian artists and Canadian products and Cana Canadian creations uh, presented and are circulating all over the world. To deliver that commitment over three years has been very, very, very challenging for the Canada Council because what happened was that we said to each discipline, do something more. So at the end of it, we did more, a little bit more in theater, more touring of orchestra, we a little more everywhere. But when you look at the numbers and you try to understand wha what was the strategy here? What did we achieve exactly apart doing more of the same? You know, what do we know in terms of how were, were we informed wi with our understanding of the markets in the world? You know, how were we informed about the capacity to the organizations that we were supporting to benefit from that tour and come back here stronger and not weaker because they are almost bankrupt. You know? So how did we make all those decisions? And the answer was we made those decisions discipline by discipline with the, r the ranking of their relative performance from an artistic point of view, which is okay, but which is not really strategic. And, and, and even the definition of what international presence means varies uh, considerably from, you know, uh, liter uh, writing and publishing and dance and, 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 and at the Canada Council, the definition of a tour or eligible expenses for a tour, believe it or not, is quite radically different from a discipline to another discipline. So a strategy is never the, uh, the, the a description on a sheet of all the small bits you did. A strategy is kind of, it's a vision that you then try to achieve. So, and, and that goes for a lot of other teams at the Canada Council, the way we address the, the issues related to technology. I mean, if you read the corporate plan of the Canada Council, you will see it's there, we talk about that, but we did nothing with it because we are addressing those questions is in the most fragmented way, as opposed to a way that is more kind of a united and, and, and organized and all of that. So we kind of said that it was possible to move from that jungle of 880 programs, each program with its own uh, eligibility criteria, which means that our staff is probably 16,000 times a year validating criteria of eligibility instead of doing once, for instance, you know, like any serious, you know, in the profile of the client, we, we do it 16 times a year, 16,000 times a year. So. So what we decided was that it was possible to move from 148 to less than 10 programs, but that those 10 less than 10 programs that will be announced at uh, the f beginning of June, uh, making sure that each of those programs that we will keep are non-disciplinary. So it doesn't mean that they are multidisciplinary, it doesn't mean that they are interdisciplinary, they are non-disciplinary. So it means that when you as an artist or as an organization or as a collective of artists uh, choose to support or elect to be supported by program one, two, uh, and so on. You know when you, you, you make that choice, informed by discussions with the staff of the Canada Council, what, are the, what is the goal of that program and, and, and what are the expected outcomes of this program and you decide if you feel that there's an alignment with your artistic mission, your, your, your vision and everything, and the goals of the program. So for the Canada Council, it's not to get rid of the disciplinary evaluation and expertise. We want to keep all that, but we want to add another lens to what we have, and that lens is a programmatic lens. We want to make sure that people know when they, they enter into a program exactly what we are trying to achieve. And the way we are working right now is that we are mapping all the money we spend, all the clients we have, to make sure that when the new program will be in place, nobody will be lost. I call it no, not being lost in, in, in transition, not lost in translation, but not lost in transition. 
so, so because what we what we want to do is we want to have the new funding model in place by the end of 2016. So it's not tomorrow that people will be impacted, and some of you will be impacted only in 2018, because you know if they are kind of a multi years commitment made just before we we have the new system, it may take some years. So it's not kind of a radical impact. Or, 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 or very rapid impact on people. But what we want to do is that we want to have a new funding model, simpler, uh, really easy for anyone applying, uh, a, a, a system, a new funding model that captures from the very beginning, because it's in the design of the program, the measurements we need, not, on, not only in terms of numbers, but qualitative measure measurement to be able to demonstrate impact, making sure that the report we ask from the organization and artists are short and sweet, but they capture what we need in order to demonstrate why that investment was is important and why we need eventually more money to, to support the arts, because we can achieve that. Mm -hmm. And we want to make sure that we do this whole transition without destabilizing the sector. So the baseline, the point of departure of the new funding model will respect, even if I don't like it, will, I don't like the way it's divided, but will respect the actual division of the pie because you cannot build the future at the expense of the present. So we, we will, if we have now 28 million in music, we will have 28 million in the new funding model, the, the day one of the model. But in the future, the Canada Council will go and plea and advocate for resources, not by discipline, but by programs. So we want money to achieve X, Y, Z. And then, so, so we will build differently the future of the Canada Council in terms of funding without destroying you know, the present and without you know, denying all the commitments we made in the past. And that future, uh, when we will present the programs uh, in, in June and when you will see exactly what is the goal of each program, and you already know two programs because I mentioned them many times. One is on international, and it's an important program, and one is uh, about Aboriginal arts. And I can talk about that if there are questions, which is for the Canada Council a very bold decision to create a program on Aboriginal art because we're taking everything we do that is kind of a sub-category of discipline and we create a program for the first time that is absolutely informed by, uh, uh, by self-determination, by a contextualization of that support that, that is truly and authentically Aboriginal, that will be administered by and run by Aboriginal staff, and really will for be for the future something that will be unique to Canada, to our history, where we, we think we can achieve something that uh, it's time that we should achieve it. Mm -hmm. so, so those two programs are already known, but when you will see the gamut of, pro of our new programs, you will absolutely re recognize where the Canada Council and how the Canada Council will respect its engagement and scale up its engagement on creation, research, and uh, you know, public engagement for different clients and, 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 and respecting the choices and the ambitions of our clients and supporting more and more the artists in their own terms as opposed to telling the artists to apply to us and beg for support by, by, by respecting our conditions and criteria and multiple boxes that we accumulated for years and years and years. So this is the general plan. Uh, I will finish and take uh, questions by saying that it's a very kind of a exciting <laughs> moment at the Canada Council now, uh, and, and we chose to be very transparent. So I announced in January, you know, we, we're going, <laughs> we will change the way we fund the arts and we want to make it more positive, uh, stronger, and it's not about shifting money, it's not about destroying the system, it's not about uh, forgetting all the commitments we've made in the past, and it's also about finding ways to make sure that we, we, we respect in a very actual way the values in which we really believe and which uh, in the arts community believe. And, uh, and make sure that the Canada Council will be more solid for the future and able to deliver more public values and more support to the arts uh, as, a, as, a, as the main uh, uh, mechanism to deliver federal funding to, to the arts. 
But I, I want to say that uh, what we are also doing right now is we are doing a complete reconfiguration of how we present ourselves to, to the world and notably to the government, uh, which is that the Kennedy Council uh, has funding programs, but uh, as is also uh, operating non-funding programs or different type of funding programs, like the PLR. The PLR is the Public Lending Right Commission. We, we spend every year $10 million to compensate authors for their, authors for their uh, the presence of their book in public libraries. This is an important program of the Kennedy Council. We want to protect it. We want to reinforce it. So it's, it's one program that is not part of the less than 10 programs uh, I will announce uh, in June. Uh, we also uh, are responsible of the Art Bank. And the Art Bank of the Canada Council has, uh, is a very rich uh, legacy that we have 17,000 pieces of, uh, of, of work of art that was created at a time that we were trying to compensate the lack of a market for visual arts in Canada. And it's not exactly the same situation you know, all these years after, but it's a very important tool to make sure that there's a presence of visual arts, contemporary visual arts, in the public life and the daily life of Canadians. So it's a very important program for us. We want to keep that. We, are, we also have a program that is, that is for uh, supporting UNESCO because we are in charge of the Canadian Commission of UNESCO. And the Com Canadian Commission of UNESCO is kind of a secret right now for most of our clients at the Canadian Council don't even know that we have that. And it's a very important uh, mechanism, especially when everybody in the arts sector is saying, if we don't do anything for education, if we don't do anything to kind of uh, build bridges between science and education, if we don't take, pay more attention to, to all those big issues, uh, you know, the arts are less and less relevant. And we are in charge of it, and we are the Canada Council for the Arts. So this program is very... So there will be at the Canada Council granting and non-granting programs. And now all these programs are kind of a now revised in order to make sure that we achieve our mandate. And the mandate of the Canada Council is both to uh, develop the appreciation and enjoyment of the arts by Canadians and support the creation of work of art. That's our mandate. The, the legislative mandate of the Canada Council doesn't even mention grant. It's, that's our activity, but it's not in the mandate. So we will continue to be a granting agency, don't worry. But we want to present ourselves as the, in, in, in the federal uh, family, we want to present ourselves as being uh, mandated and acting to champion the arts in Canadian society and to support them and to make sure that this link between the, the enjoyment of the arts by Canadians and the production of work of war is indestructible. So that's the plan. Thank you. Thank you very much, Simone. Um, for those of you that I haven't been able to meet yet, I'm Patty Pond. I'm the CEO with Calgary Arts Development. So it was our pleasure and we were thrilled uh, when the team at the Canada Council advised that Simone would be making his first official visit as the CEO. And, uh, and uh, it's been great. He's been here since yesterday uh, or the night before. So he's been part of a very interesting <laughs> and historic time in, in our city for all kinds of reasons in our province. So uh, quite, I think the somebody up there uh, has been paying attention and made it a very fortuitous <laughs> time to have you here. So um, uh, as uh, Simone indicated and Anne indicated earlier, uh, we really wanted to allow as much time as possible for a conversation back and forth. I know that there are lots of questions for Simone, for sure. Um, and so we have a couple of people, Brett and uh, Jen are, uh, have mics, I can't really see them, but okay. uh, if you have uh, questions, uh, please raise your hand. I'm gonna try and keep track of the list. Uh, what I would ask is that when you ask your question, because we are recording this, please uh, tell us who you are. If you represent an organization or you are an individual artist practicing and you care to choose uh, uh, to share your practice, please do so. And then ask your question into the mic so we can be sure that uh, those who, who may choose to watch uh, through the video can, can hear everything. So, um, there's Brett with one microphone. I see a question up at the back over there, and I see one over here. So we'll just kind of keep in mind. And people are going to keep track and help me. Great. 
Hi there. Uh, my name is Colin Martin. I'm a researcher at the University of Calgary in the Department of English. I am also on the board for Filling Station Magazine uh, here in Calgary. And I guess one of the questions I have uh, kind of deals with that latter part that you talked about, the non-granting um, role of the Canada Council and uh, as it pertains to the publishing industry in Canada, um, which seems to go through a uh, rather remarkable series of crises from year to year. And I guess one question that I have is, given the remarkable cost per page to publish in Canada for all the many challenges that you know I'm sure we're aware of with audience demographic size, geography, all that, um, how do you imagine the Canada Council um, tackling I would say more the infrastructural support of the publishing industry. For example, uh, you know, the way the province of Quebec doesn't merely deal with publishing, but also with book selling as a way to support the industry there. Um, how do you imagine translating that into um, broader institutional and structural support from the Canada Council as, uh, as we move forward? Uh, thank you for the question. It's a, it's a very, uh, uh, interesting and relevant question because, as you may know, uh, contrary to the situation in Quebec, where we are with the federal government at the federal level, is that the responsibility of the uh, of publishing is absolutely uh, shared or divided between the Canada Council and Canadian Heritage, and in fact, Canadian Heritage is definitely the major player with a logic that is really an industrial logic. So the vision and, and the responsibility of Canadian heritage is to make sure that the, 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 the chain, the industrial chain of, uh, writing, of publishing uh, is uh, maintained and developed and, and, and supported and made, made sustainable in Canada. Uh, and, and, and on that, uh, on that, like what you're mentioning about the recent investment in Quebec, a similar type of investment could be made uh, at the level of Canada, no doubt, but that would be clearly something that Canadian Heritage would do and something completely out of, re of reach for the Canada Council. The Canada Council is a kind of a, and it's the same for the music industry, by the way, the Canada Council is more focused and, will be, and should be, I guess, in the future more and more, focused on the creative aspect, the, the creative content that goes into the publishing, uh, you know, uh, file, uh, which mean, and that's why we call it at the Canada Council writing and publishing. So, so we play a role, you know, to support the writers. Uh, we play a role, as you know, in in, in literature, uh, and not, uh, you know, we we don't play any role for publishing uh, cookbooks uh, and things like that, which which obviously is done by, by Canadian heritage because they have that vision of industry. So I think that where we are, uh, we, we are, and we have to admit it, we, ha we are kind of a, a small player in that world, you know, with, with uh, less than $30 million in, invested in a, in a multi-billion uh, industry. Uh, but our role as the Canada Council is really to make sure that the, we find ways to support uh, in a very efficient way the creation of literature, poetry, uh, essay, and all that uh, in Canada, and that we also play a role to make sure that Canadians recognize more and more the Canadian content, because one of the drama that doesn't exist in Quebec in French, obviously, is that in English Canada, most of Canadians have difficulty to make the distinction between a Canadian book or an American book. Or, and, and I think that, for instance, the Canada Council is, is in charge of the literary prizes, uh, like the GG Awards uh, in literature. And that is a tool, and that's a big operation for us. It's a huge operation every year. And this year, since I came, we decided to really scale up what we did in terms of promoting the GGLA's uh, in literature. And, and we did it by doing things that people not immediately adopted, like canceling all the cocktails and taking the money to be more online and reach more Canadians and do videos and with a lot of impact. And the feedback we got from the authors was just great because they said, wow, never ever, you know, my work as an author, as a creator was promoted at that scale. So, so I think we can scale up that 
but in fact we don't have all the the strings to 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 fix most of those big issues related to the future of the industry Thank you. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, you need it on the speaker. Um, my name's Ken Cameron. I'm a playwright, a freelance playwright in the city and sometime arts administrator. And I want to take a moment in all of this as we think about the future to thank you not only for the future and for having a strategic vision for the future, which I think makes an awful lot of sense, but I also want to take a moment to thank you for the past and for the work the Canada Council has done over many, many years. I was fortunate enough to graduate from my master's degree at a time of great change at the Canada Council, much like this. And it was the year that the explorations program was cut and there was an introduction of the individual project grant that an individual artist could apply for. And you could apply either as an uh, experienced artist or yep. as an emerging artist. I was yep. emerging at the time. And I've commented many times that I built my career on that granting program because it allowed me as an individual yep. to apply for and, and, and do like individual projects. Yep. As you're moving forward into the future then, my question is what happens to the individual artist? You've spoken about disciplines yep. and you've spoken about maintaining supports to organizations. What happens to the individual who drives the arts economy at a granular, granular level? Actually, uh, honestly, uh, the individual artists will be absolutely favored by what we're doing right now because we know, we do know for sure that the role of the Canada Council, the fundamental role of the Canada Council, and actually the, the, the very reason why arm's length is important has to do much with individual artists than organizations. You know, the, the arm's length principle, the fact, you know, that the decisions about who should get the grant and which kind of support is done is always, the, cha the challenge is always with the individual artists. And, and when you think about, for instance, the Aboriginal program, the Canada Council and the entire family of the federal government will be the only body funding individual Aboriginal artists to do creation. No, but no one else does that. So for us, it's really, really important. And more than that, if someone does kind of a, even a quick analysis of where we're going when you will see the programs, you will realize that over the recent years, we have been, without saying it, we have been in fact kind of encouraging artists, individual artists or even collective of artists, to create and multiply not-for-profit organizations to kind of a move from being supported at a project level to multi-year and all of that. And we think that this kind of a, that it has a, it is a very negative side effect of everything we do. And in fact, there's a limit to it. It was good, you know, when we thought about all that, you know, in the 70s, because, you know, we, we, were, work, we were working with the assumption of constant growth. We know now that it's not the case anymore. So the big challenge for the Canada Council, as for publishing and elsewhere, is to make sure that we do, we do pay attention to the creation. That's the very essence of an arts council. And that is what nobody does at the level of the government. So we want to make sure that, uh, and you will see that in the programs, that th the way we are kind of uh, restructuring everything will give the individual artists to define in their own terms what they want to do. We won't force them to decide, okay, I'm, I mean, if they say I'm a playwright uh, or, or, or I'm, a, I'm an author, yes, they have to have published so, so many books to be validated as an author by the Canada Council, but they can do something else. Right now, if you are a practitioner in contemporary circus, you cannot be identified that way at the Canada Council your enter art, because we did not create uh, circus, uh, because creating a discipline is a nightmare. And now, after so many years of enter arts, people in enter arts are starting to argue that enter arts is a discipline. So it's kind of a, uh, so, so we want to make sure that in the future, we won't be trapped in those debates, and that the artists uh, will kind of uh, define themselves. They will have a lot of different possibilities to define what they do, that we will validate that one time, not every year, 
and that after it's validated by the Canada Council, it will become the responsibility of the artist to update its profile and tell us, you know, who, where, she, who he wants to go, and will support the artist that way. So, so there will be uh, that will be very evident in the new system. So it's not uh, it it's won't be kind of a because the goal and the expected outcome is that the Canada Council plays a very strong and powerful role to make sure that the artistic creation by individual or collective artists that is needed in order to make sure that the arts have a future in Canada is well supported. That is really essential. And there's nothing that could replace that. That responsibility has to be, you know, uh, has to be a responsibility of the Canada Council and other funders, but certainly as a national funder, it's a big responsibility. And that's something I see now in the world. You know, when I've met people, I won't mention countries because I don't want to be, but I've met other <laughs> arts councils where uh, what is uh, kind of uh, vanishing right now is the risk taking is, you know, okay, we, we have less resources, we need to export more, so we need to make sure investments and all of that. And it's a very short-term vision because what you export now that you think is successful or uh, in demand on an international market has been most of the time incubated during 10, 5, 20 years by supporting and taking risks and betting on possibilities of magic. But if you don't do that, you know, uh, after five years, you completely exhaust, you know, your, your, your art sector instead of renewing it. It's a good question. Thank you for asking it. Hey, Simone. I'm yep. Ann Connors with One Yellow Rabbit. Um, Without really knowing what the program d um, stream is going to look like, I'm still imagining it will be peer assessed. Yep. How do you, how will that structure work uh, with people who, uh, you know, right now we have the luxury or beauty or whatever of our officers knowing who yep. we are. Yep. Uh, how do you imagine that working when it's abroad? Yeah, actually, the, the obviously the officers and all of us, nobody will disappear. And nobody will uh, lose its, uh, its expertise and its knowledge. Uh, what we will do is kind of uh, redistribute that knowledge in the programs to make sure, because the program are non-disciplinary. And again, it doesn't mean that there's no discipline. It means that the goals and the outcomes of the program and the way we invested the program is not driven by uh, so much goes to theater and all of that, except at the beginning of the model. So it means that the Canada Council, in fact, to make it very simple, I will give you an example that, that may sound very strange coming from the financial world. And years ago, you know, people who know in about investment know that the investment were kind of a decided country by country. In a globalized world, a lot of people realized at one point, you know, that if you talk about the arts sector and, and even the bank sector, you need to have a, the, a vision of the sector, which is not country anymore. But it would be stupid to make investment in a country uh, where the sector is going well without knowing exactly what is the political situation of the country. So now most of the people in charge of those portfolio are sector, it's sector driven decision, but informed by the knowledge of the country as opposed to country driven decision informed by the sectors. And that is really important because it gives you uh, the capacity to have a sense of strategy. So what we will do is we will maintain uh, peer assessment, but we uh, will make sure that once, when the decision are made, that, we, that the jury take into consideration the, the desired outcome of the big program that the company or, or the individual belong to. And that will really be important, and that will be very clear for the jury. Because right now what we do sometimes, and most of the time, is uh, if you take dance uh, and, and music and even theater, we all know that we have organizations at very, very different scale. That yes, you can assess the national ballet with a company of a choreographer and two dancers, you know, you can 
talk about dance, but when you go to other considerations, notably public engagement or any other consideration, then the scale uh, of, of the work is a very <laughs> uh, big discussion. And this is why some years ago I remember vividly uh, that in this country most of the major organizations were knocking at the door of PCH to leave the Canada Council because they were feeling that their peers were the dance sector, but also organization of the same scale or with the same ambitions and the same presence in the community. So what we want to do in the future is to be able to combine both, and we will. And it's not that complicated because anyone could be at the same time an expert and a generalist, and it's true everywhere in the world. So it's something we... Uh, we want to maintain. So it's again, it's not to get rid of peer assessment, it's to make sure that on top of peer assessment from a discipline point of view, we also kind of engage and compare uh, individual artists or company within a corridor that is uh, uh, larger and that is kind of uh, informed by the expected outcomes of those organizations. So it's a, uh, it's you know, I won't reveal the structure. We're not there yet at the Canada Council. Uh, we'll, we're coming to it. But it's, it's not kind of a, what we are doing in terms of structure, in terms of combining, you know, two different expertise is something uh, not that complicated. And we also, I just want to mention, because I said that in many speeches, so if you want to understand that more, I said that it was very important for the Canada Council to go back to what is the very essence of peer assessment. And the very essence of peer assessment for me is not about debating do we give $10,000 $10, or twenty five, or do we move that and that. It's about artistic creation, it's a, a artistic quality, and it's about excellence in other domain depending of who you, who you are. And the Canada Council, it's only over the last uh, 20 years, and only for 65% of the discipline of the Canada Council that we task the juries to allocate the precise amount of money. And that is something that may change. We may keep the peer assessment and go back to the very essence of peer assessment and make sure that the decisions made by, in terms of allocating funding, is absolutely informed by peer assessment, but, but that we, we get from all this work that is done by the jurors something that is of high value qualitative value and more strategic as opposed to tactical decisions on who should get that and less and, and all that. And that is informed also by what I'm observing elsewhere in the world in terms of the, what happens with peer assessment. Yes, thank you. Uh, Simon, hello. My name is Jean-René Leblanc. I'm uh, president of uh, the board of M Media. I'm also a professor of digital arts at the University of Calgary. Um, so my question actually has to do with the relationship of the Canada, Canada Council uh, with research creation. Um, out, so I know that in the last couple of years, there's been a collaboration between the Canada Council and SHRC in terms of their adjudication process. Yep. And once in a while, uh, I know that in the media arts sector, uh, there were these really interesting little programs that specifically encouraged this collaboration between what was defined as an academic and an artist yep. or you know, vice versa. I was just wondering if there's a place for that in the future of... Uh, of the Canada Council. What we want to do with you know the resources we have now is really to keep the focus of the Canada Council on research and exploration in a non-academic context because we know that this is the this is the responsibility of Shirk. But we are in constant conversation with Shirk because we think that and, and we see that in the context of Shirk and by the way they did I think they went from, I don't know, 300 program to three. <laughs> they did something more radical than us. But Shirk is, is, is now supporting more and more research on arts and culture. And we think it's a great thing. So what we try to do now is to partner or, or work or collaborate with Shirk 
to kind of a transfer expertise and knowledge to inform their work and sometimes they need us to support work that is not that academic and that so so yes the, the, we need to have a, a very close collaboration and we believe that once we will have kind of a restructure our program and come with something that is more easy and more we will be able to collaborate more with CERC and, and CERC and other you know partners because the the goal is to make sure that each of us do something that is really in line with our specific mandates but that there's a real synergy between all these different organizations that is very difficult right now to organize for us when someone comes to the Canada Council to do a, some kind of a partnership that really makes sense it's very difficult because of our organization even when two artistic organizations let's say one in publishing and one in I don't know visual art come to us and say you know we have this plan that we could merge because we do things and we would save money, would scale up the impact, impossible. Canada Council is not encouraging that because if you go away from publishing, you lose your grant. If you go away from, you lose your grant. So, so clearly in the future, we will be organized in a way that those kind of uh, movements that are organic will be more possible. Thank you. Hi, Vicki Stroit from Alberta Theatre Projects. Hi. Um, hello. Uh, my question, uh, uh, first of all, I wanted to say that I appreciate um, the, the goal of not destabilizing the, the sector. <laughs> um, and, uh, and certainly as a theatre company with multi-year operating funding, that's very valuable. Yep. And um, I guess one, my question is, uh, is maybe, a, maybe a request for a confirmation of a possible interpretation. I recognize this is all rather preemptive, given that in June we'll find out more. But, um, I of course, we used to be able to go to the theater section and see what our possibilities were for funding. Yep. And uh, so I'm, I'm wondering if, with these multiple goals of these multiple programs, if, um, if we're able to cast our eye wider for, for opportunities for funding, given that our programs or our work may serve multiple goals from sure. these multiple programs. Is that, is that a, a yeah, sure, correct possible interpretation? Yes, because, you know, we will work with so few programs, you know, very few programs. So you will see, you know, because we'll be very transparent, you know, where, where the money is. It's, it will be very obvious, uh, you know, because now it's impossible. It's, you know, I can tell you that, mm, but, you know, it's, it, you, you don't see that. So what we want to do is, first of all, it's, it's an absolute commitment that we will, and, and our staff knows that every day actually right now because we're designing, we have a very price, precise idea of where everybody is. Everybody is tagged. We know, you know who you are and we will make sure, and that's the responsibility of our staff, we'll take a full year and a half to make sure that nobody's lost. So don't worry about that. You will find where you are, where you fit as a starting point because after that it's competition and it's, we'll see how it will evolve. But we don't want to destroy what we have now and we want to respect the commitments. And as I said, that transition that will be really planned may last several years because, you know, let's say you, you award all the money for multi-year grants, let's say in dance, in 2015, end of 2015, it will only in 2018 that the money will go back in the new funding model. So, so we'll we'll do that transition. That will announce later on for sure. Because even when I will, the announcement will made in June, you won't have any details on the program. We're not there yet. We want to be very transparent and every time you know just advance it is hear the comments and adjust and all of that because you can imagine that it's a big work. It's a big challenge in terms of designing. Imagine you know that. You know, for international, again, you know, I said it, you know, the definition of touring, if you go on the website of the Canada Council and imagine that you don't know where you go, you don't know the Canada Council, it's pages and pages of program and different criteria, different amount of money. I mean, it's a, it's a nightmare. So what we're doing now is we're kind of a, uh, really uh, going back to the very essence and questioning. And every time we, we put money in a program, we know who are the clients attached to it and all of that. So all that work is done. So don't, I mean, that's, we need to be absolutely responsible. So where we are now is we're doing the design, but what you will see uh, the first week of June is you will have a very clear sense of what is the landscape. 
you will know it's very few programs you will understand exactly how it works I mean you will recognize what the Canada Council is and the aspiration but what you will experience as an individual artist or as a collective or as an organization is that when you will enter into the new system and create your profile and, and you know you will see that the short the forms will be much 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 shorter that the reports will be much much shorter but you will, will realize that the Canada Council will be able to capture in your own words what we need in order to demonstrate the impact of what we do which we don't have now because now basically the way it works is we award thousands of grants every year and we have a research department taking piles of blue files and trying to go to that and say oh we, this is what we did and it's always after the fact never very convincing and frankly I've been trained uh, as a lawyer and as, a, as an accountant but as a lawyer I can tell you pleading the cause of the Kennedy Council you don't have a very solid case right now we want that case it's important for the future and it was not that difficult when you know money was more accessible for the arts but we see you see that every day it's less and less uh, accessible and to access it you need to be really equipped and organized so we want that and we will we I'm also promising to all the Arts Council and all the funders that every kind of a discovery and any new system any research any matrix that we're developing in all this very intensive work right now we're ready to share them with anyone who wants them we want to make sure that in the future the art sector will be much more equipped to make it make its case there's an urgency for it Thanks, hi um, woo, I'm Pam Pamela Zen and I'm a independent dance artist um, so I guess I want to return to the idea of peer assessment um, yep. being maintained and that um, I work as a contemporary dance artist and so it's a quite small community here and I'm just curious if it becomes non-disciplined how are we going to maintain a sense of regional distribution um, and ensuring that um, we're cultivating um, the more niche um, disciplines in areas which are, are less developed in the competition. I, I, it's, it's a good question. Actually, you know, the, um, those issues that I could call kind of a strategic issues, you know, regional distribution is in Canada a, a question. Uh, in England right now, it's the cause of the almost implosion of the Arts Council because they never succeeded to fix it. So diversity is another issue. I mean, we have many kind of issues like that that are of strategic nature and that are very difficult to deal, it, to deal with discipline by discipline. It's very difficult when you, you look how much money is in a discipline and the scale of the different clients and all of that. You realize that it's very, very difficult to add to the artistic evaluation and all the other elements, an, ingre an ingredient like regional balance. So we're scrambling with it. And in fact, with many, many of those issues, you know, we're doing the best we can right now, but we're not really equipped to deal with that. What we want to do in the future, because we have, again, it's not that we won't have a disciplinary evaluation, we're keeping the discipline. We love them, we'll keep them, and we want more discipline, actually, because there are disciplines right now that are not recognized by the Canada Council. And there are decisions, you know, we put opera in music. Anyone could argue with you that opera is a discipline in itself. You know, that's not music, it's a discipline in itself. So that notion of discipline is very kind of a Canada Council, you know, jargon. But we want to make sure that uh, in the future, all the companies or individual artists that are in one program that is non-disciplinary that are assessed from a disciplinary point of view, that when the funding decision comes, that those strategic uh, goals related to the program, including, for instance, regional distribution, are taken into account. And that is absolutely possible. That's, uh, and that's possible also, and more and more possible, because right now, you know, when the government says to us, or Treasury Board says to us, you should achieve more, uh, you know, regional equity, 
we can, I can say yes, but I don't know how to do it now. We can't. It's like, it doesn't work that way. So when uh, in the future, uh, with the new program system, I could say yes, and we're ready to accept money to do it, and we'll do it. And, and it's about allocating the money, uh, you know, in the programs. And we know that if you want to achieve regional distribution, it's not exactly in the international program where you should put more, more, most of your money because it's not, uh, it's not bright because the, pro, the, the artists who will go back to, who will go on the international level will need to have been nurtured before. So regional distribution comes before international. So you will know where, where you put the money in order to achieve that. So again, for the Canada Council, everything we do is, is, in, is, is not to, to take away anything is to give more capacity to the council to achieve those values that we really believe in. And that's, that's the approach. And again, it won't o happen overnight. The, the end state, the desired end state is not the new funding model. The new funding model is a tool that we will need to uh, achieve more. And the Canada Council, we'll see what will happen. But when you look at the f last 40 years of the Canada Council, every decade, there was always some kind of a reinvestment by a government, liberals, conservative, by a government in the Canada Council. We know that the last investment was eight years ago, and we know that it won't happen. It's, the check is not in the mail. <laughs> so we need to make it happen. I don't think we can continue without more resources, without being able to deliver more public values. But I think that in order to get that, in order to have the case to do it, we need to be able to demonstrate that we have strategic capacities that we lost somewhere uh, with all these programs and that kind of a uh, vision of discipline where uh, understanding, for instance, you know, how dance work as an ecosystem in Canada is one thing, but understanding you know, and mapping the artistic development in Canada is another thing. So you kind of need to take a lot of considerations that are absolutely out of reach, of reach right now for the juries of the Canada Council or even the staff of the Canada Council. And people working in the discipline now, the more we talk about that at the Council, starts to realize, yeah, we need the expertise, but we also need the expertise on you know, how this country works and how the world works. And we need to, to conquer that and, tr and being trained to do that. Hi there, my name is Alara, right here, right in the front. Okay, <laughs> you were just in the black. Uh, That's side. right. Yeah. Um, my name is Alara, I'm the artistic director of Three Left Feet. We're also a dance company, but one of the things that we want to be exploring is stilt dance. And we okay. started working with a company out of New Brunswick, Cirque Stella, as yeah. well as a company from San Francisco, Carpet Bag Brigade. So we applied to Inter Arts. Yep. And so my question has to do with feedback, actually, because, of course, it's obvious. Not, you can't fund everything. No. So we applied uh, in May 2014 to InterArts, but we never received any feedback as to why our application was denied. And, of course, we would love to continue applying. And you should I think have a feedback. It's true, but yeah. they give verbal feedback. They don't give written feedback. And that particular program, and you already talked about it, that particular program is way oversubscribed because they are so very small. Well, obviously. Yeah. 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 Um, so I just, in the new model, are there going to be um, more structured feedbacks? Okay, in the new model, where what we're working on right now, we're working on a portal and, and a backhand solution, an IT solution, where uh, the uh, capacity for uh, self-assessment will be stronger. So it means that, you know, let's say, yes, I'm a dancer, and there are right now the Canada Council at least 25 different categories in dance. You know, you can be a teacher of dance, you can be a choreographer, I mean, all of that. And, and there's no limit to it. And, and as the Canada Council, we want to know what's out there. Because, you know, we have a lot of information about the people with support, but we don't have much information of, about the people we don't support, which doesn't give us a big argument to get more money from the government. So we need to know that. So what we will do is we're creating some, a portal where the artists 
collective individual or organization will create their profile and define in their own terms, you know, what is exactly what they do and all of that, validated by, you know, the criteria to recognize, you know, what is a professional dancer for the Canada Council. And once all that is validated and you do it once with the staff of the Canada Council, all of a sudden on the screen will, will, will appear the program and the sub-activities that you are eligible to. There's no discussion. You are, if you are da 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 da, you are eligible to da 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 da. And that is re, and the way it will work, I mean, at the beginning is obviously enter art because we have the money of enter art. The money will be distributed in the new program and we will make sure that the people normally would have gone there will find where they are. That is really important because the problem we have now, you can imagine, with 148 eight programs, the number of cracks in two an artist can fall are uh, unlimited. We spend a lot of time debating eligibility because eligibility is attached to each program. So it's it's different set of eligibility. We want to have one way to do that, one way, the same for everybody, and then the programs have specific activities. And it's kind of a, it seems technical, but it's a very important way of seeing things because again, right now, we, there are artistic practice that we cannot recognize. And it's absolutely unfair that an artist who is a, an actor is recognized as an actor and, and a circus artist is recognized as inter-art. I'm sorry, I mean, these are two, they are artists, they, they have the, 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 the possibility and they should be recognized for their full practice and intention. And we need a lot of space because there are a lot of new artistic practices every, every you know, five years. And probably 10 years from now, even when we will start the new model, we will have to recognize other and new artistic practices. We, they, we won't necessarily have new companies, but practitioners. So, so we wanna make sure that that will be possible and that you will know when you will apply, you know, where you are and what you are entitled to and, and what kind of assessment you, can, you are entitled to. And we want to make sure that this is done. And obviously the retroaction to artistic company and all of that, the Canada Council can do much better than we do now. But we are busy. My staff is so busy doing things that are absolutely useless, you have no idea. <laughs> No, it's, it's terrible, you know, we're, we keep kind of uh, addressing, I mean, we, we, I have m meetings with the program officers right now because we're figuring out, you know, what the programs are, and every time I have meeting with, you know, sometimes it's uh, officers from theater, dance and all that, every time they go out of the meeting, they say, wow, so interesting to have challenging and intellectual discussion and, and talk about the future of the arts because now we're dealing, you know, with, micro problems and micro issues of conformity, eligibility, uh, company on concerned status. I mean, the, the, the work, the daily work of an officer at the Canada Council should be much more uh, interesting and much more uh, productive in terms of content to support the arts. And right now, you know, I would ask uh, you know, uh, the, the head of each discipline at the Canada Council to publish a chapter for the future of the discipline in September, they would unable to that, do that. They're too busy, their information is too fragmented, is too driven client by clients. They know the people, but we need to know more than the people in the future. We need to have an idea of what is the evolution of the art form. And, and what are kind of the new trends. And we also need to find a way to more strategically support the arts ecosystem that are mostly related to places, cities, and all of that. And without a national program, non-disciplinary, you cannot, you cannot come to that conclusion. And it's a big, uh, interesting situation that at the Canada Council right now, where we don't have time to debate is about <laughs> the relevance of our investment. We don't have time to do that. We're, we're dealing, if, if you come into the Canada Council in the new building, it's a fan fabulous building, but it's impossible not to bump with, uh, to someone pushing a huge cart full of blue files. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's amazing. Uh, you know, you, you, when you want to say hello to your staff, you just need to, you know, hello, because it's, it's, it's where we are. 
And I think it's something that we reached that limit. We, we reached, we, we have a system that worked very well for years and years and years, but probably since a certain time we reached a limit uh, uh, of sense and we kind of a need to move to the 21st century. And I keep my answer shorter. Hello. Hi. Is it on? There we go. I'm, hi, I'm Joanne. Hi, um, jo. I'm an arts administrator. I'm currently at Alberta College of Art and Design. And this goes to the question that you just talked about, saying, you know, you joked, we might not know what you mean, that we have a lot of work that we do that is um, not necessary. Well, we know that. <laughs> and so it's, I'm really inspired to hear about the capacity building that you're taking on at the Canada Council, and I wonder where would the role be um, for capacity building within our organizations for our administrators um, yep. to be able to streamline our operations to support the artists? It's a big, uh, it's, it's a big uh, topic. Uh, you will see in the new programs that we're addressing that question very specifically because we realize that not only that, in fact, we encourage the, the multiplication, the, the hyper multiplication of structures especially over the last 10 years and that probably we reach a limit of that because we're investing more and more money in on the shells and not on the content uh, so so we, 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 we realized that we need to find new ways you know and I will give you just an example that is a fascinating one be, and it's one I, I know very well because I worked and, and advocated for it a lot and it's a theater company in Montreal, Les Écuries, where it's 14 artistic directors and 12 companies in the same building. And uh, it's a very interesting and very promising model, and people in the project really believe in that. But still, as of today, it's impossible for PCH to fund them properly because the model of a building one company, is it's there, but that model doesn't exist. And the Canada Council, because they, you can imagine that there they are moments where the Canada Council right now has been asked many times, could you do something for us? And our policy is always, mm, no, we are. I want us to be more proactive. There are models out there that are very promising for the future that may not, may not interest the people who are already in the system, but uh, that are really of interest to the new generation. And I want to make sure that the Candidate Council can rapidly recognize those models and work with you know, itself, but also with other partners to make sure that we can accommodate, not accommodate, but support. And this is what I mean by supporting the artists in their own terms and not forcing them to adapt a system that was very good for my generation, that served us very well, but that doesn't work in a context of scarcity of resources and, and, and so on. So yes, it's a, big, it's a big concern. And frankly, right now in Canada, I don't know here, but uh, I know in many cities, the, the question of the, the support to arts administrator is very weak. And having been an arts administrator all my life, I know that. I know how I learned, I know how I failed, and I know that uh, all the different system to support that work that is really essential is not there. And I know that uh, if we have less very strong arts administrator, they should have impact on many organizations and not only on one, especially for small and medium-sized size companies. Hi there, uh, I'm Sue Strang. I'm the director of the New Gallery and chair of the Alberta Association of Artist-Run Centers. Um, my question actually <coughs> goes back to small and medium-sized organizations that you just said. And so with the consolidating of multiple streams into 10 or less uh, major categories, is there a strategy in place um, to ensure that the small and mid-sized arts organization that are so important across Canada um, are sustainable and remain healthy? Yep. It, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's clearly a goal that we have. 
and it's clearly important because in many disciplines, uh, the infrastructure is really uh, is so that the model is not allowed to create big uh, mega elephant. It's really to stay with small and medium uh, companies, and so so clearly uh, it, it it's there. And again, we are kind of importing the preoccupations, the money, and the knowledge accumulated for 50 years in each discipline. We don't want to lose anything, but we want to maximize and optimize the advantage or the, the capacity to answer the needs of those organizations. And it's clearly the way we work. And uh, if we don't achieve that, tell us. But we will achieve that. It's clearly the, the, the kind of design work we're doing right now. We are not at all in this situation, I mean, it would be crazy for the Canada Council to be to position itself as choosing one model and at the expense of the others. On the contrary, this is not where we are now. Actually, the last question asked was essentially to a large degree what I was going to be asking about. But uh, my name is Peter Hemminger. I'm the executive director of the Quick Dry Animation Society. And uh, in your response to Ken's question early on, I may have misheard or misunderstood what you said, but I believe that uh, you had said that uh, the proliferation of artist-run not-for-profit centers is in some ways a side effect of the uh, way that funding and administration has worked, and no, that it was in some ways negative, and I was hoping you could no, clarify what you meant by that and how it fits I, into I, the model. I didn't never mention the proliferation of artist-run center. I mentioned the proliferation of not-for-profit structures and and and, and I know that because <laughs> having been uh, at the tier school for 32, 32 years I think I signed <laughs> documents for the creation at, of at least 100 companies I know that and I know that you know uh, over the last few years I realized no I, I can't you know uh, tell again to uh, graduating students create your own company there's a limit to it and I'm, and I'm absolutely convinced that we reached that limit because we're forcing, uh, you know, uh, a lot of artists to work in a model that we cannot deliver support to anymore. It was true, you know, uh, in, in 91, but it's not true in 2015. And I think that uh, we fool them if we don't change the way we support them. So, so, so that means, for instance, that for instance, that multi-year funding for project will be possible. This is what it means, for instance. Once before, you know what? So it's it's kind of another way of thinking. So, um, with that, I'd like to wrap up the Q and A in this format. Uh, Simone and uh, Jean Pierre have 20, 25 minutes, give or take, to sort of hang around with some refreshments over by the bar. Um, I'm pointing her out, she probably is yeah, right. Just, yeah, please come because you still have voice, man. My voice is... Uh, uh, just so you know, there are two folks here from Canada. You can't get one, get the other. For sure. <laughs> and, and know also that from the perspective of Calvary Arts for um, we always want to be a champion for the arts and for artists and for Calvary. And so, I absolutely want to be a true line to the Canada Council and all of those new innovations and different perspectives and possibilities around modeling and those kinds of things. We want to know as much about it as the Canada Council does, so please be sure to um, uh, ask us, contact us. I have staff members here who have their name tags on, so if you don't know any of us here, uh, uh, please uh, don't hesitate to include us in those conversations and know that through our continued communications with the Council and the Elmer Foundation for the Arts, we want to try and find a way where the three of us are actually working together complementing and building strength in the sector, not working for our own individual purposes. So that's part of why Simone is here today, why he was in Edmonton these last couple of days, and why we'll meet as a tri-level on May the 26th, so that we can be reading it and, and take what we've learned and what we've heard in, in this recent past and start to begin to find ways to activate that and apply that. So uh, thank you all very much for thank taking you. the time. Thank you very much.